Shalom, my name is Joe Shulam, and we are doing and have been doing the Torah portions that are read in every synagogue on the Sabbath days every week. And we are approaching now the end of the Jewish calendar year, and uh, this next Shabbat we will be reading from a portion that is called Ha'azinu, which means give ear. Listen, and in the book of Revelation we are told that when the saints gathered around the throne of the Lamb, they will be singing, and they will be singing two songs, the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. The song of Moses, we have two candidates. We have Exodus chapter 15, which is the song that Moses sang with the children of Israel right after they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. It says, then Moses sang this song to the Lord. But there is a second song of Moses at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, and that is chapter 32, the end of chapter 31, verse 30, says this. Then Moses spoke in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. The words were ended, not the people. Now, this song has a very, very special genre. It's a genre that doesn't exist very much in the Bible. There's very few examples of it. First of all, is a prophetic genre that is in verse. All the prophetic texts from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all, and all the way to Malachi are written in verse. When we read them in English and in other languages, we don't see the verse, we don't get the verse. But when you look at the Hebrew text of the Psalms or of these songs, you see that they are written in two columns. They are columns that are called in Latin parallelum membrarum. That one column makes a statement, the other column repeats the statement in different words. In other words, it's like a commentary. It's the message that is in the first column, verse 1, will be also in the second column, verse 1. And, and this genre exists in Exodus 15, and it exists in Deuteronomy 32, and it exists in the Song of Deborah in Judges chapter 5, and, it, and in the book of Psalms many times. And Specifically in Deuteronomy chapter 32, in the portion that is called Dvarim, the words, and uh, in the book of words, the book of Dvarim, which is Deuteronomy, and in chapter 32, it says, give ear or listen. And that's what the name of this chapter is in Jewish tradition, Ha'azinu, of this portion, Ha'azinu. Let me read for you about 21 verses because I will be concentrating on these 21 verses. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on a tender herb, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. They have corrupted themselves. They are not his children because of their blemish. a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus deal with the Lord? 
of foolish and wise people? Is he not your father who brought you, who bore you actually it should be? Has he not made you and established you? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. As for your father, and he will show you your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries to the peoples according to the numbers of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land and in the wasteland, howling wilderness. He enriched him, instructed him. He kept him as an apple of his eyes. As an eagle stir up its nest, hover over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on his wings. So the Lord alone led him. And there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride in the heights of the earth, that he may eat the produce of the field. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flint rock, curds from the cattle and milk of the flock with fat of the lambs and rams of the bread of Bashan and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with choicest wheat and you drank wine the blood of the grapes but Jeshurun grew fat and kicked you grew fat you grew thick you are obese then he forsook God who made him and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoke him to jealousy with foreign gods. With abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, not to God. To God did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. Of the rock who begot you, you are unmindful and have forgotten the God who fed, fathered you. And when the Lord saw it, he spurned them because of provocation of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, children in whom there is no faith. They have provoked me to jealousy by what is not God. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols. But I will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. I want to stop here at the end of verse 21. I said earlier that this is a song, it's poetry, but it's not just regular poetry. It is poetry that in professional language is called Riv, which means it's a court case. God is taking Israel, his children, to court. And he is inviting witnesses and judges like any other normal court case. The judges are the heavens and the earth. They are the judges. And the witnesses are the rain 
and agriculture and uh, the world, the nations, the Gentiles are the witnesses. So God is the plaintiff. He is the one that is complaining, taking his children, Israel, to trial. And what is the accusation? The accusation is, I'm your father. I, I begot you. You're my children. I have been a, a perfect father, a perfect God. I am the rock that made you. That within itself is a very big theme, the rock. The rock in the wilderness from which they drank water, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 10. The rock on which Moses stood and saw the revelation of God in chapter 34 of Exodus. The rock that is the triangular stone that holds the building together in Psalms 118. And all that is found not only in the New Testament, in letter, the letter of Peter, but also in Qumran and also in rabbinical literature, the rock of our salvation the rock that begot us, Israel, is God and the Messiah that he sent to redeem us. God has been a perfect father. He's always been just. And God is truth and there is no injustice in him. He is righteous and upright. They, Israel, have corrupted themselves. They are not behaving as his children. They are blemished. They are perverse and crooked generation. God doesn't deserve, in verse 6, how his children have treated him. They act foolishly and unwise with their father. And the rhetorical question appears in verse 6. Is he not your father who brought you, begot you, who gave you birth? Has he not made you and established you? If you don't remember, let me remind you in verse 7, Moses is speaking to the people. Let me remind you of the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you. Ask your elders and they will tell you. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, that's talking about Genesis chapter 11, when God created the nations. Before that, there were no nations. Everybody spoke one language. God created the nations in Genesis chapter 11. The fall of the Tower of Babel. And then he spread out the sons of Adam and made nations. He set boundaries to the people. Each nation received their territory. According to the number of the children of Israel. Which means what? 70 nations. That's the biblical ethnology. Seventy nations by the seventy children of Jacob that went down to Egypt. The Lord apportioned his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. God's inheritance was given to Jacob, the divine, the spiritual, the godly, the legal, the loving inheritance of God was given to Israel. Yes, other nations had laws. We know the Hammurabi, law of Hammurabi. We know the Enuma Elish that is even older than the law of Hammurabi. We know several other more ancient and more new ancient codes of law. 
But the law of God that was given to Moses in Mount Sinai and to the children of Israel was given to Jacob, was given to Israel. God found Israel in the desert, in the wasteland, in the howling wilderness. And he took him out of the desert and enriched him. I mean, if you read the first verses of Jeremiah 31, you'll immediately see how this theme is goes all the way back to the to the eighth century BC prophets and all the way back to the to the earliest of the Psalms and all the way back and, and forward all the way to the book of Revelation if you wish. Same theme. He found him in the desert, in the wasteland, in the howling wilderness, and he enriched him instructed him, gave him the Torah. Torah means instruction. Doesn't mean law. It means instruction. Instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. That's another theme that repeats itself in the 8th century prophets. As an eagle stir up his nest, hover over its young, spreading out its wing, taking them up, carrying them on his wings. Ah, dear brothers and sisters, Remember, remember the words of Jesus before the crucifixion. The words of Yeshua in the end of Matthew chapter 23 as a bird. How much, Yeshua says, how much did I want to gather you under my wings as a bird, but you would not. It's taken from here, from this Torah portion. And it's not the only place that this Simile, this example, this parable in, word, in a few words is taken. Yeah, as an eagle stir up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led them, him. And there was no foreign God with him. He is the only God. Read Isaiah chapter 45, you find out there is only one God. And that God revealed himself in his spirit and in his son. Yeah. He made him ride in the heights of the earth. That he might eat the produce of the field, the fat of the field. And draw honey from the rock. And oil from the flint rock. God gave Israel the best of the best. Curds from the cattle, milk from the flock, with fat of the lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the choicest wheat. And you drank wine, the blood of the grapes. But, verse 15, Yeshurun is another name for Israel, based on the root of honest, straight, direct, grew fat and kicked. You grew fat, you grew thick, you are obese, says Moses. To the, to the people of Israel, they're standing at the edge of the Jordan River before they cross the river to the land of promise, to the land of Canaan. Then you forsook God who made him. Israel forsook God who made him and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked, him to they provoked God to jealousy with foreign gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons. So when people sacrificed to idols. They weren't sacrificing to the statue of the idol. They were sacrificing to the spirit, to the demonic spirit behind the idol. And we learn this from here. It's a very important teaching. New gods, new arrivals that your father did not fear, didn't worship. In other words, they didn't know. Of the rock who begot you, you are unmindful. And have forgotten the God who fathered you. So sad. So sad. Ma Moses, after... 
40 years leading these people in the wilderness, feeding them manna from heaven, water from the rock. After all that time, at the very last of his speech, he says, you have forgotten. The God that, that fed you, the God that took you out of Egypt, the God that crossed the Red Sea in dry land, you've forgotten him. You're not mindful of him. The one who fathered you, made you a nation, you've forgotten. And when the Lord saw it, he spurned them because of the prov provocation of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what will happen to them, what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children of whom there is no faith. Here comes the crucial text. They have provoked me to jealousy by what is not God. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols. But I will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move them to anger by a foolish nation. Now this is these last verses and the text that I read is the basis of all of Paul's theology and of all of Paul's motivation to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Also based on the Promises that God gave to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Hosea, uh, to all the prophets, all the way to Zechariah and Malachi. Yes, this, this text of Azinu, of hear, hear this, O people, pay attention to, to what I have to say to you. This is a court case. I'm taking you to court with witnesses and judges. Remember, and to end this teaching, I want to go to the book of, of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 11. And read just two verses for ending this uh, teaching for Brad TV on the Torah portion of Hazinu of here, this, pay attention to this. Romans 11, I'm going to read verse 25 and 26. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part had happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written the liver came out of Zion and he'll turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant with them that I take away their sins now on what how is this going to happen it's also in chapter 11 of the book of Romans I'm going to read now at, at the end of my teaching from chapter 11 Verse 11 to 14. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Why has salvation come to the Gentiles according to Paul? So that they will provoke Israel to jealousy. Based on this text from verse 20 and 21, from Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 12. If their fall is riches to the, for the world. And their failure riches to the Gentiles. How much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke jealousy. To those who are my flesh. And save some of them. Ah. Paul is basing his mission to the Gentiles. His call by Yeshua to be an apostle to the Gentiles. 
in order to have the Gentiles provoke the Jews to jealousy and return them to the place where God reveals his face to them. Please read as homework. Ezekiel chapter 39 from verse 21 to the end of the chapter. You'll get a revelation. God bless all of you and keep studying the word of God. Pray for Israel and for the world to know the Messiah. In the name of Yeshua, Amen.